Hello everyone! Today we'll have a new lesson about Introduction to Computer Ethics. What are ethics? Ethics are a structure of standards and practices that influence how people lead their lives. It is not strictly implemented to follow these ethics, but it is basically for the benefit of everyone that we do. Ethics are unlike laws that regularly mandate what is right or wrong. Ethics illustrate society's views about what is right and what is wrong. Computer ethics are a set of moral standards that govern the use of computers. It is society's views about the use of computers, both hardware and software. Privacy concerns, intellectual property rights and effects on the society are some of the common issues of computer ethics. Computer ethics is a part of practical philosophy concerned with how computing professionals should make decisions regarding professional and social conduct. Margaret Ann Pierce, a professor in the Department of Mathematics and Computers at Georgia Southern University, has categorized the ethical decisions related to computer technology and usage into three. Primary influences such as the individual's own personal code, any informal code of ethical conduct that exists in the workplace, and exposure to formal codes of ethics. Universities also should be addressing these ethical issues in two ways. First, in computer ethics policies. Given the importance of information technology in the practices of today's universities, and given the possibilities of unethical use of this technology by students and staff, universities should ensure that they have policies regarding the use and management of information technology by students and staff. Another is in computer ethics education. Given the importance of information technology in virtually every contemporary profession, Universities should ensure that their curricula pay attention to ethical issues in the use, management, or development of information technology. Such education should be part of more general education on the societal aspects of information technology. Let's talk about the privacy concerns. First is the hacking is unlawfully intrusion into a computer or a network. A hacker can intrude through the security levels of a computer system or network and can acquire unauthorized access to other computers. Next is the malware, means malicious software which is created to impair a computer system. Common malware are viruses, spyware, worms, and Trojan horses. A virus can delete files from a hard drive while a spyware can collect data from a computer. Followed by data protect protection, also known as information privacy or data privacy, is the process of safeguarding data which intends to influence a balance between individual privacy rights while still authorizing data to be used for business purposes. Next is the anonymity or the way of keeping a user's identity masked through various applications or the intellectual property rights. Copyright is a form of intellectual property that gives proprietary publication, distribution, and usage rights for the author. This means that whatever idea the author created cannot be employed or disseminated by anyone else without the permission of the author. Next, plagiarism is an act of copying and publishing another person's work without proper citation. It's like stealing someone else's work and releasing it as your own work. Another privacy concern is cracking. It is a way of breaking into a system by getting past the security features of the system. It's a way of skipping the registration and authentication steps when installing a software. And last is the software license, allows the use of digital material by following the license agreement. 
Ownership remains with the original copyright owner. Users are just granted licenses to use the material based on the agreement. Let's proceed to the other relevant online privacy, privacy issues that may occur include such as personal information on public computers. When students or staff use publicly accessible computers, they may unknowingly leave personal information behind, such as cache web pages or access web pages that are left in temporary stage on the disk drive and may remain there even after a browser is closed, and cookies or small files that are put on a hard disk by a website to identify users and their preferences that are then available for inspection by others. Next is file sharing. Student or faculty computers may contain software that makes files on them accessible to an other users on the campus network and outside without knowledge of the owner, or may allow files to be stored on a central server that are then accessible to others without their permission. This could allow strangers to read these files that may contain personal information. Next is the publicly accessible databases. Many universities have databases that have public access, for example, databases that contain directories for students and staff. These databases may contain privacy-sensitive information for which students and staff have given no permission. Another is the university web pages and bulletin boards. Web pages maintained by the university, by faculty, or by students may contain personal information that invades the privacy of others. Likewise, postings and repostings or forwarded messages on bulletin boards or in other electronic forums may contain personal information of third parties for which no authorization has been given. Another relevant online privacy issue is the search engines. Search engines can be used to collect personal information about students or staff. Specifically, a university's own search engine may be used to collect personal information that is found on the university's intranet or campus network. If such as search engine has access to many sites, it may give a detailed profile of people. It may tell about the student, for example, what courses she or he is enrolled in, what student groups he or she is a member of, and what campus events she or he has participated in. And last is the third-party market research. Students constitute an interesting population for some marketeers and market researchers, and they may try to enlist educators to help them acquire information on students or solicit directly to students. The data collected by these parties is likely to be privacy sensitive. But what are the effects on society? First, the effects on the society is for the jobs. Some jobs have been abolished while some jobs have become simpler as computers have taken over companies and businesses. Things can now be done in just one click whereas before it takes multiple steps to perform a task. This change may be considered unethical as it limits the skills of the employees. There are also ethical concerns on health and safety of public employees getting sick from constant sitting, staring, at computer screens and typing on the keyboard or clicking on the mouse. Next effect is the environmental impact. Environment has been affected by computers and the internet since so much time spent using computers increases energy usage which in turn increases the emission of greenhouse gases. There are ways where we can save energy like limiting computer time and turning off the computer are putting on sleep mode when not in use. Buying energy efficient computers with Energy Star label can also help save the environment. Last is for the social impact. Computers in the internet help people stay in touch with family and friends. Social media has been popular nowadays. Computer gaming influences society both positively and negatively. 
positive effects are improved hand-eye coordination, stress relief, and improved strategic thinking. Negative effects are addiction of gamers, isolation from the real world, and exposure to violence. Computer technology helps the government in improving services to its citizens. Advanced database can help huge data being collected and analyzed by the government. Computer technology aids businesses by automating processes, reports, and analysis. Let's proceed to the ethical standards. Various national and international professional societies and organizations have produced code of ethics documents to give basic behavioral guidelines to computing professionals and users. They include Association for Computing Machinery, Australian Computer Society, British Computer Society, Computer Ethics Institute, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, and League of Professional System Administrators. First, for the ethical standards is the Association for Computing Machinery or ACM, is a U.S.-based international learning society for computing. It was founded in 1947 and is the world's largest scientific and educational computing society. The ACM is a non-profit professional membership group claiming nearly 100,000 students and professional members as of 2019. Its headquarters are in New York City. The ACM is an umbrella organization for academic and scholarly interest in computer science or informatics. Its motto is Advancing Computing as a Science and Profession. For example, ACM Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. Next is the Australian Computer Society or ACS. It is an association for information and communications technology professionals with over 45,000 members Australia-wide. According to its constitution, its objects are to advance professional excellence in information technology and to promote the development of Australian information and communication technology resources. For example, is the ACS Code of Ethics, ACS Code of Professional Conduct. Another ethical standard is for the British Computer Society, or BCS. It is a professional body and a learned society that represents those working in information technology, or IT, and computer science, both in the United Kingdom and internationally. Founded in 1956, BCS has played an important role in educating and nurturing IT professionals, computer scientists, computer engineers upholding the profession, accrediting chartered IT professional status, and creating a global community active in promoting and furthering the field and practice of computing. The example of it is the BCS Code of Conduct and Code of Good Practice, which retired May 2011. Next is the Computer Ethics Institute for the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics. The IEEE, or the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, is a professional association for electronic engineering and electrical engineering and associated disciplines with its corporate office in New York City and its operations center in Piscataway, New Jersey. It was formed in 1963 from the amalgamation of the American Institute of Electrical Engineers and the Institute of Radio Engineers. Due to its expansion of scope into so many related fields, it is simply referred to by the letters I, triple E, except on legal business documents. As of 2018, it is the world's largest association of technical professionals with more than 423,000 members in over 160 countries around the world. Its objectives are the educational and technical advancement of electrical and electronic engineering, telecommunications, computer engineering, and allied disciplines. Example is the IEEE Code of Ethics and IEEE Code of Conduct. 
And last for the ethical standard is the League of Professional System Administrators. Originally, the corporation was created as the System Administrators Guild Incorporated in July 2004 by volunteers of the Ucinex Association as part of a plan to spin off its SAGE or a Special Technical Group into a separate organization. After the spin-off from the UCNX Association was halted in November 2005, the volunteers involved in the spin-off opted to move forward as a new organization which was renamed LOPSA and began reorganizing itself into an independent entity. The organization's mission is to advance the practice of system administration to support recognize, educate, and encourage its practitioners and to serve the public through education and outreach on system administration issues. LOPSA has several ongoing programs that is used to further its mission. Example of this is the System Administration Administrator Codes of Ethics. So that's all for the discussion about the introduction to computer ethics. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.